Hello, Sim Gamers, Pirate Goblins, and Hack Mutters. If you're at a point where you basically pwn T1 and want to explore the next level, this video is for you. Maybe, like me, you're really good at locating and manually cracking um, tier 1s, like this list that I've been given from scan.t1. Just go ahead and hardline in really quick. Kind of preface the video or episode with what we're working on here. So maybe you're set up like me where you have either a script that you've written that just absolutely crushes T1, uh, you know, T1 uh, dead NPCs. Like this one right here that I wrote. As you can see, it is making quick work of any of these T1s. System slots, upgrades full. I am able to basically chain together my maximum number of chains in a single hard line. So, <clears throat> Maybe you're at this similar point where you're either really, really good at manually cracking, you use a public script available by someone else, or you've rolled your own to solve these scripts really, really fast. Whatever the reason, I assume you clicked on this video to learn how to start breaking into tier two uh, derelict corporation scripts. I wanna remind you that tier two is a significant jump up from tier one. The risks are higher, uh, namely, um, high sec and mid sec, which is where tier two li lives, uh, those have access to your balance and your GC, so they can actually take money from you if um, used inappropriately. Uh, some of the locks will involve your your account setup, either your balance or your um, transactions. So those are the kind of things you'll be taking a look at in tier two. While the risks are higher, the rewards are significantly greater. Um, you know, in these cracks, we were we were getting well. That one is an outlier, two hundred uh, hundred fifty thousand, but like fifty thousand uh, GC per crack. Tier two gets you anywhere between ten to twenty million per crack, so it's definitely worth taking a look into. So here's what we're going to cover today. We're going to cover how to find tier two corporation scripts. And we're going to cover how to start, how to get started breaking into them. But first we need a refresher on finding tier ones. This is just a really quick one. <laughs> um, probably from the previous video, scripts.fullsec, generally we can grab this top sector. Chats.join. Make sure you join to the channel and then run scripts. Come on, scripts.fullsec. Put in the sector, name of that sector again. <clears throat> and here we're finding all these public scripts. At this point, I expect that you're probably pretty familiar with the names of these and can probably recall quite a few of them off the top of your head and are just running scans and stuff and cracking them over and over again to money up. Well, the procedure for finding tier two is pretty much the same. In this case, we're gonna take a look at scripts high sec. We could also take a look at scripts mid sec. It's basically per, uh, personal preference on whether you wanna go high sec or mid sec. They're really, as far as the NPCs are concerned, there isn't much of a functional difference. Um, Gonna join the channel, run my scripts high sec with the sector for that channel. And some of these names we see in here should be familiar. Let's take a look. Here's a whole bunch of scripts that people have made. But I see Cyberdyne member access, which is very similar to cyberdyne.public. I see Nothing in that column. 
Uh, here's suborbital airlines, members only, same as suborbital airlines here. So these high second mid step scripts are the places you're going to go to start getting tier two NPCs. But there's a reason why I want to remind you on how to find tier one public in, uh, scripts because tier one public information is useful stuff. So we're going to take a look at suburbital airlines.public just to get in really quick. In order to get started, we need to find um, news posts. In order to get started with tier two, we need to find usernames and usernames are found in the tier one, at least to begin with, these tier one updates. This is not a sufficient username. We're actually looking for full blown usernames. Um, just kind of skimming through to see if I can see anything here. Reminder, reminder, got a cheap feral bunny butt attacks, take or clone. Employees utilizing something, something, employees. Here we go. H underscore Jimmy is a username. And I'm just going to make note of that really quick off screen. Don't mind the flashing of that code. We'll take a look at that later. So definitely stick around for that. Um, I'm really only seeing the one username of, pro oh, here we go. Here's another, here's another guy. Third eye grill. Flashing some code once again. So this, uh, you know, gave me a couple of easy usernames that I might be able to use in my tier two explorations. Once again, if we go up here and do a high sec scan, we were playing with suborbital airlines. So we can take a look at suborbital airlines members only script. And this script is much simpler, but also um, requires some information that isn't as easy to find. So we have H Jimmy as a potential username. And from that one, we got a hit. Basically, this lets us know that we uh, this is what we're looking for. We're looking for the suborbital airlines member panel. We'll check Third Eye Grill as well to see if we get a, a hit there. And indeed we did. So a pretty lucky find actually finding two users out of the tier one list that work in tier two. That is not often going to be the case. So as you're finding users in tier one, it's really, really useful to find a place to store those users to use later. You can do what I did and copy and paste them in notepad, but that gets tedious. So stick around when we actually talk about a code tutorial for using database functions to store information in game with your character. So here's the code window of the code that I wrote up for basic uh, database script. This is less than 500 characters, just barely. Um, but if you're absolutely crushing tier ones, chances are you've got more than 500 characters to work with. That's totally cool. And maybe you can incorporate some of this information if you've written a script for scraping tier ones, you might be able to incorporate some of this into your tier one script to extract uh, after you extract some usernames and kind of file those usernames away in your database as you're working throughout tier one. But here I've written a basic straightforward um, database interface that I can just manually use with my user so I kind of want to go through it. Once again, the first thing I'm doing up top is checking that I have my required arguments. If I don't, I'm going to let the, let the user know. I wrote a quick function that just returns missing arguments, a uh, uh, standard format, so I can save some characters. Uh, then I incorporated three different commands. I have an add command, which allows me to add a user to my database. A get command, which allows me to retrieve all the users that are in my database. And if there are no users, it'll it'll give me a little indicator that there any, isn't anything in there. And in case uh, my code is messing up or something else happened and I need to wipe the entire database, I have an init function that I wrote. And we're going to go over all these. I'm going to start from the bottom, I guess, and work my way up. 
Interfacing with the database really comes down to this line right here. The function is hashtag DB, and there are a few key functions you can use that are really, really handy. There's R, which is to remove a document. There's db.i to add a document. There's db.us, which is upsert. I is for insert, U is, US is for upsert. And upserts, uh, <clears throat> I will just insert the document and it'll in insert duplicates of the same document over and over and over again. In this case, we don't need duplicates of the same username in our database. So that's where upsert comes in handy. Upsert allows us to insert a document if it doesn't exist or skip the insert if it already exists and won't insert a second copy. And then to get database information out of the database, we use hashtag db.f to find stuff. Go over the code a little in a little bit more detail, but first we might as well take a look at what it does. Uh, sim.db, it's my little private function command, in it. And this says confirm true, confirm true. And I'm just having it return the MongoDB response verbatim as is from MongoDB. And we can take a look over here in the code what's going on. If my command is equal to init, then we return information. I'm using a special operator called the ternary operator. Its format looks something like this. Basically, your condition, maybe it's equal to true, whatever it is, whatever condition is. And the question mark is asking, is this condition true? If so, do this. Colon, which means otherwise, do that. So that's the basic function of the ternary operator in JavaScript. Um, it can be used in cases like this to sort of simplify, reduce characters without reducing readability too much. I'm saying if the user has specified a confirm uh, as part of their arguments, then go ahead and run dbr and return that result. Otherwise, let them know they need to confirm true and that's what happened here. So. It returned a OK false with confirm true. I went ahead and added confirm and it did that code there. The next is the get command and we'll go ahead and run that here. Sim.get or not, not sim.get, sim.db command get. This should return the full list of users. In this case, we're getting nothing because we don't have anything. Back to our code base here. This line is retrieving the users from the database and storing them in this users variable. So we're using hashtag db.f and then we're specifying the, um, the parameters of the documents we want to extract. I use a, a type, um, a type column to separate the kind the, the data in my database. So it's much easier to retrieve specifically what I want. In this case, Sim doesn't have any other databases, so there's no reason, there wouldn't be any reason to do this necessarily, but I'm assuming that later on, I might want to add more database types and I don't want them to get all jumbled in the document DB. So I add this object of type to separate out the DBs here. And then DBF returns just a, a basically a, a database cursor, an open cursor. This operation closes the cursor and returns an array of all the results that match this query. Sorry, bonk my microphone. That match this query. And then I've gone ahead and thrown a sort against it because why not? We'll have a nice sorted list of users. I'm also declaring my output variable, which is an array. And then I'm gonna iterate through the users and extract the username only because this document is gonna have a lot of different properties. It's gonna have um, an ID, it's gonna have the type, it's gonna have a username variable, right? But I wanna simplify, I only want the, the user variable out of this 
object. So for each object, I go ahead and push to the array, u.users, and then I return the result. And here I'm checking, once again, using this simple ternary operator, I'm checking the length to make sure it's, I've got more than, I have, basically I have an array of, of a non-zero length. If I do, we'll go ahead and um, return it. In fact, I could save some characters probably by just doing this. If my output length is greater than zero, then return the output. Otherwise, return null. I saved two characters. <laughs> and then we're on to the add command, which is what we're going to use now to sort of um, demonstrate how we can use this. On top, the command isn't H Jimmy, the command is add. And then the user is H Jimmy. I did put in the logic that if I don't if I don't specify the user, I say, hey, it requires this information. So H Jimmy. And here we have um <clears throat> it's telling us we upserted a, a document, it got a new index. And we can go ahead and upsert our other user here. Third I grill. We should now have two users in the database. So if I get them, indeed, it just spits out these two. And now I have some copy paste that I can use. Um, like we already did before with these two commands. So if I copy paste in H Jimmy, I get the suborbital airlines member panel. If I copy paste in third eye grill, I can check this as well. So hopefully that tutorial and code is helpful to get you started on how to find um, tier two dead corporations how to set up with the uh, a database, a basic database to store usernames as you find them to try against the tier two corporation. And that uh, should be enough to get you started. Back to Hackmud here and on your way. The rest of this, I leave for you to discover. And I will say until next time, I'm Sim Gamer, and this is hack button.